Hello. Um, this video is for the purpose of going over your final writing assignment, um, which I've posted today um, along with the writing pro uh, project proposal forum and all of the materials you'll need to engage with this assignment. Uh, don't panic. It is not due till Monday, April 24th at five minutes to midnight. Um, so basically, I'm posting this now. Uh, to get you thinking about it and working on it and workshopping it well in advance of the deadline. And it just goes better that way if you don't write the paper the night before. Um, it's not a ridiculously long paper. It's 1,000 to uh, 1,250 words, which should be between four and five pages. Um, it's essentially a reflection paper, but it's, I expect you to make an argument in the context of this uh, reflection paper. Um, and uh, basically how I've done it is we've uh, studied six theorists in this course, and um, I've basically composed um, three general course overview kinds of questions, one of which is a bit of an experiment this, um, this, this, this semester. Um, I'm not sure about it. You'll have to give me feedback um, and let me know whether question three is an interesting or effective one or not. All right. Um, anyhow, we're going to give this a go. Um, basically, the idea is your responses to the question using the two theorists should isolate sort of a problematic between the positions discussed. Um, your task is to formulate an argument related to the question and your co chosen theorists. Now, um, the idea is uh, that uh, you should use these questions as a jumping off point choosing your theorists in terms of how you'd like to respond to the question, right? So um, let's just use the first question as an example. Given the argument studied in this course, how should we best characterize the most basic nature or condition of the human being, right? Now, it, the language I'm using there is kind of specific because as we get towards the end of this course, I mean, at this point in the course where we're at now, uh, just before reading week, uh, we're still firmly ensconced in the human nature theorists, right? Um, essentially, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and what we'll see from Hobbes all present us with a definition of the human being from which we can work to understand any particular human being. So there is such a thing as a human nature, right? Um, the reason and a disposition to rational sort of dialogue um, had to do uh, with Socrates' characterization. Plato gives us a three-part breakdown of the soul and we are this combination of body and soul. So no matter who you are, if you're a human being, uh, this is your situation. Right. Aristotle, again, through his use of the function, winds up is sort of characterizing the most basic nature of the human being. Our specific difference from animals, for example, is the fact that we're able to reason and, in a sense, train ourselves. But we also have an emotional landscape as well. So Aristotle argues that we should use reason to train our emotions so that we can express our capacities most fully, that is, flourish, right? Um, in Hobbes, you'll find that in his characterization, we are fairly simple creatures led by appetite and aversion, right? And given the fact that we're led by appetite and aversion and we want what we want, we don't want what we don't want, effectively what Hobbes argues is that by nature, human beings, what we really want is power. Our present means to attain some future apparent good. We're all led by desire, and we are intrinsically self-interested creatures. Right? So these theorists all think that we've got a human nature, whereas we'll find something a little bit more complicated come out of Nietzsche. We don't have a definition that is sort of binds us all, right? And likewise with Kierkegaard, basically we're thrown into the world and basically what we are is what we will become and what we will ourselves to become. 
Kierkegaard's got a bit of religion um, it, and a notion of God and a leap of faith that winds up sort of, uh, you know, centering the dialogue about what human beings uh, find themselves, what situation, excuse me, what situations human beings find themselves in. Uh, Nietzsche, uh, likewise, has sort of a contextual analysis. Essentially, we're animals, according to Nietzsche. Um, weird animals, and so far as we make culture cultures and give our lives meaning in these kinds of ways and effectively he's critical of that but we are biological physiological psychological kind of beings is sort of bound up in a context right so um we find ourselves in a situation and what we will become is a response to our attempts to strive given that situation so we have a condition and not a nature right so effectively right when you are choosing your theorists to respond to this question you should ask yourselves do i want to argue that there is a nature or a condition right what sort of nature do i want to argue because for each of the first theor three theorists that we discussed socrates plato aristotle we're basically good creatures right um, remember the Socratic dicta, they hold for Plato and Aristotle to a certain extent as well. There's this chocolatey center of goodness that just needs to be unleashed, right? Whereas uh, the theorists that come after right, are a little bit more pessimistic, right? So, um, or they would argue realists with regard to human nature, right? Um, so, when it comes right down to it, it sort of depends on uh, what you want to argue, what you see as evidence from the theorists we've studied in this course that is most compelling to draw a conclusion. Don't try and agree with me. Don't do it. Right? Formulate an argument wherein you are arguing your conscience. Right? So, and choose the theorists in order to engage with the position that you want to take. It may turn out that you don't want to claim that there's a, such a thing as a human nature. Choose theorists that help you raise that issue. You may want to agree with Socrates and show that Plato and Aristotle kind of have his back, right? Um, you may want to agree with Nietzsche and find some sort of strange um, connection with Socrates. For example, right? That might be an interesting way um, to engage with this question. Nietzsche, Aristotle might be a lot of people consider Nietzsche a virtue ethicist, so that might be a good way to approach it. So you see, generally that's the way um, that uh, you would approach these questions. You could center this basic nature condition uh, of the human being question around: Are we basically good? Right? Or are we basically amoral creatures? And that might be a good way to engage with this question, refining it. Right? Because I left these necessarily sort of general. Question number two reads, given the arguments studied in this course, what should the role of the faculty of reason be? Uh, what should be the role of the faculty of re reason in relation to the passions or desires? A lot of the theorists um, it claim that we should just, well, Socrates, for example, we should put our desires or beliefs in brackets and use reason as our guide. Again, um, to a certain extent, we find this in Plato as well. Aristotle in, invites the passions, desires, and emotions to the table, but nonetheless, reason should be in control, right? As we turn to Hobbes, you'll find that reason is just a tool of the desires. It's a calculator that we use in order to help us get what we want, which is really power, right? 
to a certain extent what we'll find in Kierkegaard is that there's a limit beyond which reason cannot help us. We need to take a leap of faith according to Kierkegaard and again um, in Nietzsche we'll find there is an entire section called reason in philosophy where he considers the philosophical account of reason idiosyncratic, right? So he's going to be critical, right, of reason and argue for a different sort of relationship to the passions or desires, right? So that could be a very interesting question um, that you will refine and approach in your own ways. And then finally, and this is the experimental way, uh, one right at the end, given the argument studied in this course, in what way, if any, would you argue that we're distinct from animals? To a certain extent, um, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle all point to the faculty of reason, and um, at least in Socrates and Plato, we find a notion of a soul that winds up supporting um, their arguments, right? We're besold creatures, we've, we've got a bit of divine, we've got reason, so um, to a certain extent, right, reason allows us a bit of a distinction between these animals, right? Um, in Hobbes, what you're going to find um, late on in the argument is uh, sort of an argument about politics and uh, to a certain extent animals, insects specifically. I call it the too bad we're not bugs argument, where, uh, where you know, we're so nasty to one another because of this distinction between ourselves and animals. Animals it can sort of get along with one another in a natural kind of way, whereas human beings, because, <laughs> and you'll see, Right. Um, you, you have a harder time. We need artificial agreements in order to bring us into a sort of harmony with one another. Right. Um, and who are we studying last? Um, Kierkegaard, right, uh, points to our relationship with God. Right. And to a certain extent, what we find in Nietzsche is that. Um, yeah, it's it's we're not wildly distinct from animals except in so far as we create cultures, right? We give our lives meaning in different ways. We're historical and have memory in different ways, etc., etc., etc. Right? So um, these are your questions. I hope to have uh, sort of it picked good ones with um, for you to engage with here. Um, for your reference, I've posted a sample structure. It's very general and just sort of a rule of thumb. If it helps you, great. If not, throw it in the garbage um, and do what's com comfortable to you um, for writing these philosophy papers, organizing your ideas and arguments, that sort of thing. Um, at least part of um, it, how you're being assessed here is getting it right. So you'll be giving an account of the two theorist positions with regard to the question that you're responding to. Um, and it, to a certain extent, part of your grade is going to come from getting that right. Uh, part of your grade is also going to come from the strength and the insight of the arguments that you make as well. So you should start off by, here are the two theorists that I'm talking about. Here's what they argue now. What I would like to do with these two theorists is make this point, right? That's the point at which it becomes an interesting and your argument, right? So... Um, Nonetheless, uh, the sample structure is there to, um, to help you organize your ideas into some sort of a consistent sort of original work of academic art, effectively, right? Um, it, given the, 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 the sort of um, statement about originality there, this should be original. Um, zero tolerance policy on plagiarism for this course in general. If I come across a case of plagiarism, you fail. And not only that, but you're passed on to the Dean of Students office, at which point you could be kicked out of school or suspended or some other sanction um, applied, your transcript is marked anyway, right? Um, so uh, you read over those policies and if you're using ideas that aren't rattling around in your own head, show your reader where to find them. 
I don't care about specific reference um, styles, right? MLA, PA, Chicago, that sort of thing. I read them all. I don't care which one you use. Just pick one, be consistent with it. If I go looking for it, you should tell me where to find your source, right? If it's a source other than your own understanding. Right. Um, so if you're unsure uh, how and under what circumstances to cite the course syllabus and Moodle actually have a link to CiteRate, which is a library hosted program put on by the Academic Writing Center that tells you how and under what circumstances you have to cite properly. Um, so it, make use of that. You've got plenty of time at this point. That might be a good project for reading week. Um, and I'll be honest, more than your other assignments, I'm looking forward to reading what you do with these, uh, with this assignment, because this is the point where you get to make an argument of your own. You're not just arguing, uh, offering an account of somebody else's argument, right? So I'm interested to see what you do with this assignment. Every semester, I have a number of papers that just shine and offer a good deal of insight. So um, it's where when I say, I look forward to reading your responses, exclamation mark at the end of this writing assignment. I really mean that right? because it, for me, this is the most rewarding kind of assignment. And I'm a little bit irked that I only have maybe 48 hours to grade all of these at the end of the class um, because that's how it works. You submit on the 24th, I have to have grades in by the 26th, right? All of your final grades, all tabulated, all of that, right? So I wish I had more time with your writing assignments, but I do really enjoy seeing a, a sort of an overarching view of what you've taken from this course and seeing you actually yourself make a philosophical argument, right? Um, it's the most rewarding part of the course for me. So um, have great days, one for each of you. And um, if you have any questions, plenty of time to come to my office hours and ask them. Um, plenty of time to send me an email to ask them. Um, you've got the forums, um, which are a great way to help you work out your understanding of this material and formulate your response to this assignment. Um, so um, good luck and uh, good day.